Hello Year 7, I hope you're keeping well. Um, as usual, we're going to start with our review and feedback from last week's lesson. So last week then, 34 students scored 100% on the quiz. Well done. We had a Year 7 average of 77%, so once again, well over the three quarters mark, which is excellent progress. Keep up the good work. Here is some of the work I liked this week. Now, it was really difficult to choose some of the work this week because um, a lot of people who completed the starter did a really good job at explaining why they felt um, they disagreed or agreed with the statement. Um, but the two pieces that I have gone uh, for this week are really good, very descriptive, so I'm going to read them out to you exactly as they appeared to me. So, the first one says, in a case of murder, I disagree that it was all of the boy's fault. I disagree with this statement because the parents left him alone with the cat he does not like. However, he was the one who actually killed the cat, so I would say that it is some of the boy's and the parents' fault. Brilliant. I like the fact that you looked at both sides of the argument before coming to a conclusion that actually suggests that it, it is both of their fault. So, thank you very much for that one. And the second one underneath says, I disagree that the boy is completely responsible for the death of the cat. This is because the boy's parents left him at home with a pet that he dislikes, which is a lot of the parents fault. I agree. If the boy's parents didn't leave him at home uh, with the cat, the boy would never have even killed the cat. Therefore, the parents are mostly responsible for their child's actions and should have took the cat with them. However, the boy did kill the cat, which makes it some of his fault. Again, I agree with that one. The boy really hates the cat and can be shown in the quote, and its mad gold stare and the way it sat crooning dark warmth. He loathed all that. The boy's parents knew their child hated the house pet, so why did he leave them with it? Good use of question there. Although the parents were hugely to blame, the boy could have gone to a different room or ignore the cat. And I really like that end sentence because it's absolutely true. He absolutely could have ignored the cat. So some brilliant responses there coming through. Like I said, that's absolutely fantastic. Well done. Um, in terms of feedback from the quiz and the starter, I've, I've put a starter up that looks at the grounds, the tenors and the vehicles of metaphors. Again, it's something that we're going to look at in this lesson, but I do think it's something that we need to reinforce because it's going to be very important as you're going to be doing some writing that involves metaphors, um, certainly next lesson, but we'll look at it a bit more in this lesson. So take a look at the starter on the next slide. Thank you. For your starter today, you need to do three things for each of the statements. Number one, you need to decide whether it is a metaphor or whether it is literal. Number two, if it is a metaphor, identify the tenor and the vehicle. And number three, if it is a metaphor, come up with ideas for what the ground could be. OK, so we have the teacher planted the seeds of wisdom. Words are weapons with which we wound. After the battle, we counted our dead. They numbered in their thousands. And you might want to pause the video here to help you with that starter. Here are the answers then. So the teacher planted the seeds of wisdom is a metaphor. The tenor is wisdom and the vehicle is seeds. Words are the weapons with which we wound. This is also a metaphor. The tenor is words and the vehicle is weapons. And the third one, after the battle, we counted our dead. They numbered in their thousands. This is not a metaphor. Well done if you got both of those two, uh, first two correct. And uh, just make any corrections if you did make any mistakes. Next lesson, we will be asking you to do a piece of writing on poetry. The writing will be on a poem that we have not looked at so far. You'll need to understand how well you can understand the poet's use of metaphors in the poem. Everything that we have looked at over the past few weeks will, be a, will help you to be able to write about the poem. You should, and we strongly encourage, that you write about the poet's use of metaphor in the poem, as that's what we are looking for. So before we do that, let's review the three parts of the metaphor. You should know this already, but we will just go over it just in case, for whatever reason, somebody missed a previous PowerPoint or you just want to go over it. So the thing that is actually being described to the reader is called the tenor. The imaginative idea that it is being compared to is called the vehicle, which is the made up bit. And the things the tenor and the vehicle have in common are called the ground. With that in mind, then, which of these statements are metaphors and which are literal, which is describing something real? Please, can you write down the metaphors for me, please? So we've got number one, when the Simpsons came on TV, the boys were glued in their seats. Number two, the tiger crept forward slowly, slowly, never taking its eyes from its prey. Number three, my heart swelled with a sea of tears. 
and number four under the light of the cool white moon we left each other forever and you may want to pause the video here so that you can write down the metaphors so the two metaphors on the previous slide were number one when the simpsons came on tv the boys were glued in their seats and number two my heart swelled with a sea of tears for each of these metaphors can you please list the tenor vehicle and some possible ideas for the ground and again you'll want to pause the video here so that you can do that okay number one when the simpsons came on tv the boys were glued in their seats the tenor is the way the boys are sat in their seats the vehicle is the glue and the ground the boys are unable to move from their chairs they are completely stuck it would be very difficult to set them away from their seats Number two then, my heart swelled with a sea of tears. The tenor is a feeling in the heart. The vehicle is a sea and the ground. A sea of tears shows that the person has a lot of tears, as many as a sea. Seas are very deep as well, so the feeling of sadness could be bottomless with no hope at all in sight. If you've got any of those, give them a tick. Um, you may want to add some in if you were struggling with that. Together we've already looked at some of the things that you can do when reading an unseen poem for the first time. Number one, use the title to help you understand what the poem is going to be about. Number two, read the poem three times. And number three, find parts of the poem that you do understand. Use this to help you piece together what the whole poem is about. Here is a section from a poem called The Can Can. It was written by Mandy Coe. A can can is an exciting type of dance. And it's also important to know that this isn't the poem that you're going to be writing about. OK, so the can can. When I dance, my blood runs like a river can. My feet fly like the birds can. My heart beats like a drum can. Because when I dance, I can. Can do anything when I dance. Have a think about and write down, number one, what is this poem about? Number two, what metaphors can you find? And number three, what are the examples of the tenor, vehicle and ground in this poem? And you'll want to pause the video here to be able to do this task. Number one, the poem is about the great sensation the writer feels when they are dancing. So how much they love dancing and what it makes them feel and how it makes them feel like they can do anything. Uh, number two, my blood runs like a river can. My feet fly like the birds can and my heart beats like a drum can are examples of metaphor in the poem. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got for number three. So when you upload your work, make sure that that um, is on there so that I can see what you've got for that section. You can also write about the effect a metaphor has on the reader. So let's have a look at an example for this poem. I'm not going to read through the poem again. If you want to listen to it back, you can go back to the previous slide. But in this poem, the writer's use of metaphor makes the reader feel like dancing is exciting. The writer sounds free from all of her worries. Even though all parts of the dancer's body sound like they are out of control, the writer is able to make this sound like an incredible sensation. You can write about the poem's effect on you when you write your assessment or your piece of writing. The poem you'll be writing about is called The Tom Cat. A Tom Cat is a male cat. Write down a few ideas as to what you think this poem might be about. And I would like a little bit more than this poem is about a male cat. Thank you. You might want to pause the video here for you to write down some of your ideas. The poem uses some words that you may not be familiar with, so before we read the poem, let's have a look at some of the words the poem uses that you may not know. We've got malevolent, wanting to cause harm or evil. You may have used this word when you were completing uh, Oliver Twist earlier in the year, but if not, malevolent means wanting to cause harm or evil. Brindled, brownish with streaks of other colour, so like uh, those cats in the pictures there. Uh, bard is another name for a poet. Also, don't forget that um, you can find the words in the poem and you may want to make more notes on the words as we look at them. It's completely up to you, but it might help you when going through uh, your writing in the next lesson. Capers, to run and jump in a playful way. Air, uh, which means before, and you might remember this one from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Primeval, belonging to a very early period in the history of the world. Blotched, which means covered in marks. Scorn, hatred or disrespect. Play, to pretend. Veil, to hide. 
This word can be used as a noun when it means a thing that veils. So this woman in the first picture is wearing a veil. But this word can also be used as a verb when it means to hide something. The man is veiling his eyes from the sun. With that in mind then, match the word with the image used to show it. So what I'd like you to do is write down each of those nine words and then write down the letters that accompany them, please. And you might want to pause the video here for you to be able to do that. OK, let's go through these answers then. For Bard, you should have put the letter A. For Brindled, you should have put the letter D. For Blotched, you should have put C. Capers is F. Scorn is G. Veil is E. Uh, play is I, primeval is H, and malevolent is B. Well done. Tick those if you've got the more correct well done. If not, just make your corrections now. Here is how you should use your time in the next lesson. And I will go over this um, next week with my audio next week. But just as a heads up, this is what we're going to be looking for from you in the next uh, online lesson. Read the poem three times. It's very easy to miss some things through as you try and read very quickly because you know you haven't got um, perhaps as much time as, as what you might have in class or you're worried about making sure you've got enough time to do your writing. But do make sure you read the poem three times. Make sure you find two or three metaphors. Think about the tenor, vehicle and ground for each of these metaphors. We've done a lot of work on this now on metaphors you should be able to spot them straight away and start thinking about the tenor vehicle and ground for each of those straight away plan what you are going to write in each paragraph uh, some of the best pieces of writing from year seven that i've seen this year certainly with the oliver twist but also those that were here for a midsummer night's dream uh, had a little plan they planned what they were going to say and it made for a better piece of writing so bear that in mind the first paragraph should summarise what the poem is about in a couple of sentences. This will form your introduction. Again, you will have done introductions when you did your Oliver Twist and your Shakespeare uh, pieces of writing if you were here for the Shakespeare one. So it's very similar to that. You just tell us a little bit about what the poem is about and that will be your introduction. The next three or four paragraphs should explore the poem then. Make sure you use quotations in these paragraphs and that you explain what some of those metaphors mean. Then write a conclusion summing up what the poem is about. If you've done that, it'll be absolutely great. Like I said, don't panic about that. I will remind you about that again next week. OK, so to finish off then, which one of these situations best describes someone malevolent? Is it A, the villain planned to change his ways? Is it B, the hero planned to save the world? Is it C, the teacher gave the boy a detention for not handing in his homework? Is it D, the nurse decided to poison the patient? Or is it E, the driver skidded on the ice and hit the little girl? You might want to pause the video here so that you can write your response down. And the answer is D, the nurse decided to poison the patient. It is not, unfortunately, C, it does not make me malevolent if I give you a detention for not doing your homework. I'm very sorry about that. I'm not really. You are now ready to attempt the quiz this week. Try to remember everything you have completed this week as you go through the questions. And your extended learning opportunity for this week. Can you create your own poem on an appropriate topic of your choice that includes at least two metaphors? So here is your opportunity to get creative. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys can come up with. Um, and I may even do a shout out and do some of the positive logs for the best ones. Uh, thank you very much and have a good weekend.